And we are back with you. It's week two, testosterone. That was a fat interview you did with AP right there, Jeff. Yeah, that was awesome to be able to get him like that. He's such a cool guy. He's just so, so personable and like took time to, to sign autographs for all, all the little youngsters out there. They were lined up. You know, he wasn't able to get to everybody, but definitely taking the time to get, you know, to do the autograph thing and get to know some of the fans. And from spending some time down in training camp the past couple seasons, I got to say that He's an, he is an imposing physical presence. I mean, I've seen Larry Johnson up close and personal. He's not quite <laughs> as big as LJ, but Jeff, he's a big back. He's as tall as LJ, although he's not necessarily as thick yet. I right. think that he can definitely put some, some more muscle on, on that big six foot two frame. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed with his big play ability. I know we're kind of just getting off on this Adrian Peterson, you know, gushing about his talent tip, but that's, that's okay, okay when, when we have such a great athlete and Ladies and gentlemen out there, I grew up out, right outside of Boise, Idaho, so I'm a huge Boise State Broncos fan. And when the Fiesta Bowl happened, I know you were watching the game with me. It was we a were great going game. crazy rooting on the, the, the blue and orange from, you know, Big B, what we like to say, and on the blue turf and whatnot. And, and AP torched us in the overtime. Ran a touchdown on and, one and play. I remember we were so impressed about what he could bring to the NFL. And then to have him come to our favorite team. It's just like the oh. skies opened up, the, the sun shone down on, on the, this little place we call home in Minneapolis, and God sent an angel named Adrian oh, Peterson. Oh, thank you. All thank day, you. baby, all day. Well, another young running back that was very impressive last week, not a rookie, but kind of a rookie in the sense that he's entering into his first season as a starter, gave fantasy owners a little bit of a lump in their throats at the, the very first play of the very first game of the entire season, essentially, Jeff. The Indianapolis Colts and fantasy owners got, got, got a major scare right out of the gate. One of the key cogs went down. Yeah, that's right. If you don't already know who Kenton Keith is yet, uh, you need to get him if you've got Joseph Adai. He's a very valuable handcuff to your team in your given situation. Now, we know that Joseph Adai is a fantastic playmaker. Jesse, I know you like him as well as I do. Whether he's running the ball between the tackles or catching it outside in the flat, he's going to produce for you, and he showed something that we hadn't seen yet. And that was some grit, you know, some, some, some grind and some get up after the hit and come back. And he really performed well after that. Yeah, we're talking about Joseph Adai right now because we're breaking down the matchup. Indianapolis traveling <coughs> to Tennessee, a, a battle of two teams that are currently 1-0, a division matchup. Uh, Tennessee beat Indianapolis last year at home, a little bit of a surprise. And when you, when you look at Vince Young and the maturation of this guy, we've got him as one of the players you probably want to reserve uh, on a fantasy level this week. But Jeff, in his last eight starts, Vince is 7-1. and one. Yeah, he's definitely a winner, and he showed that he could win again last week. So right. Whether, and, and he seems to be the kind of player who isn't really concerned about his stat line. I think he threw for 78 or some yards, it wasn't three good. fantasy points in most uh, scoring formats. Uh, you, you're, you know, he's not really ready for the fantasy field quite yet, although he's awesome on the, on the NFL field. And as long as he wins, it doesn't matter to his team. They keep winning, and that's good for them. So one of the big surprises from week one uh, for me was how well Indianapolis' defense played. I mean, they completely baffled the Saints. They shut them down all throughout the entire game. I mean, Drew Brees, fantasy owners, were definitely frustrated, as were owners of Deuce McAllister, Reggie Bush, Marcus Colson. All those guys really struggled last week against Indy's D. So it's interesting to me. It's going to be uh, fascinating to watch to see if Indy can bring that same level of play here on the road at Tennessee. What do you think? Is Indy's D for real? I definitely think that it is. Um, I think they're a great free agent pickup for this weekend and, and for you know the weeks to come. We've seen them be a good fantasy defense in the past. I really like Frank Sanders and what they got going on. Uh, I'm a Bob. big believer in, in Rob Morris and what he does in the middle of the, of the defense. And I just think that, that, uh, Car that I'm sorry, uh, Indianapolis defense is, is one that you can get on your wire. And they're going to do well this week. They stopped the run, and we saw them do that at the end of the season last year. Right. And that's a trend, fantasy football players, that you need to watch is at the end of the season, we start to see things that are going to be in true form throughout the course of the next year. And we saw Plaxico Burris beating defenders last year. He's doing that again. And we saw Indianapolis stuff the run like crazy. They're doing that again, and I think that we'll see more of that. So what Jeff is telling you is that the 175-yard outing last week by Chris Brown, although it was against a tough defense in Jacksonville, probably not going to happen here again this week. Indy, no. Indy is able to stuff the run. Uh, if you're, if you're going to put Chris Brown into your lineup, don't, don't get caught expecting a similar stat line. He does lead the NFL in rushing at this time. We've seen Chris Brown really hot out of the gate before, but he has a tendency to fizzle. 
Yeah, and, and I, I do think, too, that the, the, the Titans there, they really want to utilize Lendell White as their primary ball carrier, although they're going to go with the hot hand. Winning is of the, of the utmost importance in the NFL, and Jeff Fisher knows that, and he will roll with the hot hand, whoever that may be. I expect this game to be fairly competitive. It is a divisional matchup. These games tend to be closer than you might expect, especially since it's in Tennessee's house. Obviously, you start all of your key Colts in this matchup, but uh, from a Tennessee perspective, if they're able to be competitive, I don't think that it's going to be pretty. I think it'll be a, a little more ugly, and from a fantasy perspective, you know, you might want to look elsewhere. Yeah, 2-0 for the Colts. <laughs> Big time <laughs> offensive juggernaut there, so start all your Colts with pride. Atlanta traveling to Jacksonville. Uh, the loser of this game is going to begin the season 0-2. Jacksonville got absolutely ripped last week by the aforementioned Titans. They gave up 282 yards on the ground, Jeff. 5.8 yards allowed per rush play. Is Atlanta going to get it going in this game or Jacksonville bounce back? I don't like Atlanta at all. I, I think that they're going for the first overall draft pick in, in the 08 NFL draft. I, I'm, I'm not real interested in any of the, of the Falcons and what they're going to bring to the table. Maybe you can start Algie Crumpler. If he's your number one guy, you probably got to start him in that situation. I like Jacksonville. I think they're going to run the ball like crazy. Yeah, Maurice Jones, Drew owners, uh, they got a little harsh taste of reality last week. Jones Drew only had 32 yards rushing in that game. I told you in the preseason that Jones Drew would not be able to equal his stats from last season. I agree on the whole, but I do think this is a nice play for Jones Drew this week, yep. a bounce back player. And like Jeff said, the Falcons are going nowhere in a hurry. The one uh, caveat to that that I would say is that Jarius Norwood is going to get more touches than he did last week against us. His value is probably suppressed right now because he only had five or six touches last week. I do think he could potentially break a long run or two, just like Chris Brown did last week against Jacksonville. So if you can pick up Norwood on the cheap right now, not a bad idea. His value is only going to go up. There's no way Dunn's yeah. carrying it 22 times a game. I just get the season. sense that Jack Del Rio has been working his team over this week about how to wrap up and tackle and how to stop the run. And because of that, they have a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth, you know, after the, oh, for the, the kind of embarrassing divisional loss. I think they come out with a vengeance this weekend and shut down Atlanta. Jacksonville's defense makes a good play as well. Well, one team that came out uh, with the guns blazing last week were, were the Pittsburgh Steelers. No surprise, they were playing the Cleveland Browns, but they were on the road. Big Ben throws four touchdown passes in that game. Santonio San Holmes, a guy I know you're real high on, caught a 40-yard touchdown bomb there. Now they get to travel back home in, uh, in their home opener, welcoming Buffalo to town. I mean, am I seeing this wrong, Jeff, or is Pittsburgh going to roll again? I love Pittsburgh. I, I think that Willie Parker is going to definitely improve on his 109-yard performance from week one. I really like him to get into the end zone this weekend, and I'm a big believer in the offense that they've installed there. I think the Big Ben has it going on on the mental tip as far as quarterbacking goes. I like Heinz Ward. I like Santonio San Holmes. And one of the biggest reasons why is Buffalo's defense is sim simply nothing more than a farm system for the rest of the NFL. <laughs> yeah, as soon as their <laughs> players get good, they're gone. They're gone, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, on, when Buffalo has the ball, Jeff, I know a lot of fantasy owners invested pretty heavily in Lee Evans because of his big play yeah. potential. Last year he had a couple different games where he really erupted and just landslide victory for you if you had him in your starting lineup. Lee Evans was frustrated last week, obviously, by a very tough defensive yep. secondary uh, by the Broncos. But Marshawn Lynch had a decent game, 90 yards and a touchdown against Denver. What do you think is going to happen with Buffalo, man? Pittsburgh brings the D. Yeah, they bring the D most definitely. And, and I definitely think, too, that – Marshawn Lynch and Lee Evans could have, could have opposite stat lines this week. I think that Pittsburgh's going to shut down the, the run game a lot, and I don't think that Evans will be held to one catch for five yards. I He's agree. not facing Champ Bailey this weekend. Right. And so I think that, you know, he could get in the end zone. He's going to be the only bright spot, in my opinion, on Buffalo's team. But another tough matchup for the, the Bills, and until they get some better matchups, it's really hard to start them. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly on Marshawn Lynch. If you have room on your bench for him and another viable play that makes a good uh, in a good matchup situation, don't expect Lynch to do that against Pittsburgh's D. I think Buffalo gets behind early and is forced to abandon the run. Uh, Cleveland traveling to Cincinnati in an AFC North Division matchup. Cincinnati played really well last uh, last week on Monday night, the early game of the doubleheader Monday night slate. Uh, they barely eked out a win against Baltimore, but, 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 but they played pretty well against Baltimore's D. Now they're going against Cleveland. Yeah. So tell me the floodgates aren't about to open here. Yeah, well, I mean, 
It's like the whole division is standing there trying to stick the hole in the, or their <laughs> finger in the hole, the gap. The dam's about to break. Cincinnati's about to go crazy. Right. I think you can start all of your Bengals except for Chris Henry. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the Bengals are going to roll here. Cleveland just gives it up on the ground, gives it up through the air. They, they really are uh, one of the teams that's fighting Atlanta for that right to the number one pick. Uh, they made a move this week. I, I don't think I've ever seen this happen before in the history of the NFL where your week one starter – at quarterback is traded before week yeah. two happens. I actually like the idea of them trading Charlie Fry. I mean, they drafted Brady Quinn and they have Derek Anderson. And so with Fry on their team, they've got three good quarterbacks. For them to good. trade a guy, in my opinion, those guys are good. Uh, no, listen, an NFL quarterback doesn't have to be good to be of value to his team. And quarterback's the most valuable position in the league. The problem that I have with the situation is they only got a sixth round pick. Right. You got to be able to hold the Seahawks over the flame a little bit and get at least a fourth or even a third. I mean, this is a quarterback. Right. The most important position on the team. So, so I, I think it was okay that they traded Fry because obviously Quinn is the guy they want to be the the their boy going forward. Uh, but you know they should have got more. It makes sense for the long term, but it really really screws them for right yeah. now because Derek Anderson's going to be their starter at quarterback. Yeah. He hasn't been getting the reps with the number one. I understand they want to get Brady Quinn in there. But uh, I think that all those things add together to a perfect storm. Cincinnati could win this game. I'm not exaggerating. They could put up 40-plus points yeah. and win by, you know, a shutout. Yeah. Well, as the junkies take a look at uh, of the scroll that we've got going uh, uh, across the bottom of the screen there, you'll see that our, our sleeper defense of the week is the Bengals, and it's just for that reason. There's no good option. You really can't start Braylon Edwards now. Jamal Lewis is, isn't going to do very well in this game. The one guy who remains a weekly starter on this team, in my opinion, is Kellen Winslow Jr. Right. I, I think he's a good enough athlete, and Derek Anderson is going to be s sufficient enough at quarterback to get Winslow the ball seven times maybe. Yeah, I like that sleeper D pick, Jeff. Uh, last week, since he forced five turnovers and had yeah. two sacks against Baltimore, right. and Cleveland just sucks. Another team that totally sucks right now is the Kansas City Chiefs, Jeff. Chiefs, Chiefs fans have to be completely dismayed. Last week they got shellacked by Houston, yeah. and now they have to travel to Chicago. So yeah. could it get any worse for the Chiefs right now? The Chiefs are definitely struggling right now, and they still have no passing threat at the wide receiver position. I mean, how many years has it been since they And Eddie had? Kinnison is out. <laughs> but how can you even remember ever? A good wide receiver for them. Mm. We can think about some of the guys that they've drafted, like Snoop Minnis. Yeah, Snoop Minnis. Where's he? Where's he now? <laughs> well, Dwayne Bow is the most recent guy that they've drafted, and and we'll see what he has to bring to to bring to the table. He's a big kid, but as a rookie wide receiver, he's not going to make any kind of right. impact now. It's hurting Tony Gonzalez because he's always double covered. And what's crazy about this situation there is. They can double cover, the defenses can double cover Tony Gonzalez and use that other guy as the eighth man in the box yeah. to stop against the run. So everything's going down for Kansas City. They're another one of those five-win teams, it seems. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. In fact, Larry Johnson is a guy that I am benching in one of my leagues this week, Jeff. As crazy as that sounds, uh, I have a bet going with, with another uh, owner in that league where I bet him that uh, I bet him ten dollars that Larry Johnson would finish with less than a hundred all-purpose yards in this game and note and remain scoreless. So I'm down on LJ for the yeah. time being. He's going to be better later in the season. Yeah. He's got a great uh, run during the fantasy yeah. playoffs. So now is a, a buy low opportunity with Larry because his his value couldn't be much worse. Especially man, I'll give you gonna... two starters that you could start for him. <laughs> Uh, I, I know better than to no, trade with probably you, the Jeff. biggest reason <laughs> probably the biggest reason I think that they're gonna struggle is, is uh, Chicago's got to have a horrible lump in its throat over the way that they lost the game putting up only three points offensively uh, against San Diego and really holding LT in check until the fourth quarter I, I just I definitely think that that Chicago is gonna gonna get you know up big for this game and, I think so and too. really crush the Chiefs. Yeah, Chicago's offense should show up here. Yeah. They're gonna be breathing a sigh of relief facing the Chiefs defense yeah. after being on the road last week against San Diego's yeah. defense. I think Bernard Berrien could get a could get a long play here. And, and you know I'm not real high on Rex Grossman. I pr probably wouldn't start him in in a fantasy situation right, right now. But I do think he'll rebound with a better game. Yeah. He plays better at home, and Cedric Benson is gonna be yeah. better too. Here's a, a sleeper alert for this game. Uh, Devin Hester, there's some talk about uh, out of Chicago about getting him the ball a little bit more. And I think that one thing that they're discussing in Chicago is the fact that Hester was really left 
uh, as, as a non-factor in the game against San Diego, and they're going to try to get no him touches. In the ball, in, in, into the game with the ball in the open field, whether that's in the return game uh, or, or whether that's on the offensive side of the ball. So keep an eye out for him. He makes a decent waiver wire acquisition. So you're checking out Testosterone Fantasy Sports right now. You're, you're enjoying the show. After the show, we invite you to our website at TestosteroneSports.com. It's completely free content on the website. We break down the matchups. We have uh, analysis on a story, on a week, weekly stories. We, we drop in the vein for you all of the recent things that are happening inside the NFL. Jeff breaks down all the player rankings. There's just a plethora of things for you to check out on TestosteroneSports.com. And right after this show, we do something we call the Fat Chat. It's basically a, a, a chat room where we meet with the junkies that have watched the show, and we just talk to them about their matchups for the weekend. Yeah, when you play as much fantasy football as we do, you sit behind your computer a lot, and you wind up with a little extra baggage to tote around with you all day long. And because of that, because we love fantasy football so much, we're trying to set ourselves this apart. You, me, and Yeasty, we're the fat pack. Yeah, exactly. So we're the rat on, pack of the fantasy football world. So, so get on, get on the uh, fat chat after the, the show the is chat. over. Yeah, right. Come on to the fat chat with the fat pack. We'll be on there. We'll be talking about fantasy football. Jeff will have two uh, two screens going at one time. One with the fan with the fat chat. The other with his online porn that he loves so right. much. We know that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for getting <laughs> we that know out that'll there. that'll be happening. Uh, but we will be back after this break. We'll be breaking down the rest of the matchups. You are tuned in, locked and loaded to Testosterone Fantasy Sports.